The Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro is the best camera in my opinion when it comes to value for the features that you get. We've owned two of them now for about three months and they have been a game changer for our commercial work, client work, spec work, and short narratives. Today I wanna to talk about five hacks with the 6K Pro, starting from the least important to what I believe are straight up necessity. Let's hop into it. Tip number five is calibrate your monitor. When the 6KP was first released, Blackmagic got a few complaints about there being consistency issues with the tint on the back of the screen with the bodies. However, being quick to listen to their customers, they did offer a firmware update where now we can calibrate with sliders. This is only really an issue if you're working with multiple pockets at the same time, like we do for production work, and it doesn't affect the final image. It can just make it a pain to try to monitor your image from the back of the screen. Tip number four is know your frame rate limitations. And what I mean by that is with the Pocket 6K Pro, certain frame rates can only be shot at certain aspect ratios. Our first time renting the Pocket 6K Pros, Jared and myself didn't understand that there were limitations to the sensor size with frame recording rates, and we couldn't figure out for a little bit why the heck we couldn't get it to shoot 60 frames a second. It would only shoot 50 frames a second. So just a real quick breakdown of those frame rates for your sensor size. If you were wanting to shoot on the full 6K sensor with no change in aspect ratio, you are limited to 50 frames per second. If you want to use the full 6K sensor and shoot up to 60 frames a second, understand you're gonna be cropped at a two four to one aspect ratio. If you wanna shoot 60 frames a second at 17 by nine, you're gonna be shooting on the 5.7K sensor. And if you wanna shoot at 120 frames per second, understand you're gonna be windowed at 2.8K. Tip number three is use false colors. Now, for most seasoned veterans or anyone used to using an external monitor, this tip may seem elementary. However, if you're switching over from a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, this tip is invaluable. The false colors on the 6K Pro are a feature that I use on a daily, weekly, hourly, heck, even a minute by minute basis to check exposure and make sure that I don't have a headache in post-production when it comes to color grading. And these colors are based on exposure ranging between zero and 100. For example, for most Caucasian skin people, you would want your IRE to be between 50 and 70. So if we're looking at the false colors on the back of the Pro, we want our face to be anywhere from dark gray to light pink. We don't want yellow, we don't want red, that means that we're blown. And we don't want blue or purple because that means that we are too dark and underexposed. Tip number two is menu presets. This is another feature that we use every single time we go out to shoot. All you have to do is go into your menu, hit the presets tab, and save your current settings. I personally have three presets that allow me to switch from 24 frames a second all the way to 60 frames a second very quickly so that whenever we're in a situation where we're changing on the go, all I have to do is tap that button on the menu and my camera has set itself to the settings that I determined beforehand. And tip number one, this is the most important, is set your function buttons. With our company 6Ks, we have our function button set to where we can quickly toggle our false colors, our focus peaking, and our monitoring LUT. These are things that we can check exposure with very quickly, but you can set your function buttons to make your camera easier to use for whatever situation you're in. With all that being said, I hope this video was helpful if you are new to the 6K Pro system, or if you're a veteran with the 6K Pro, let me know what your favorite feature is down in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, want to see more like it in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I love growing this community here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you in the next.